Okay, I just get to my little speech. I don't really like to so much to speak. Usually I write and with the magazines I'm working. But I'm glad to do it. Where is the place for women? Someone has said the days go by so slowly and the years go by so quickly. That's exactly how I feel today. I was only in my mid-forties when the first time we met in Linz and now I'm already be celebrating the 25 years. we celebrating God's amazing grace. And in the Bible we find about 75 different celebrations. Already in Luke 15, it's three mentioned about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And when the lost son returned home, the father said, kill the fatted calf and let's celebrate. I don't think Ronke and Godona killed the fatted calf, but I think they killed almost, but I think they killed a lot of chickens. Thank you so much. You guys did such a good job with your team, and we really appreciate it. I grew up in this country, in Serbia, in the north, in a small little Hungarian town. And when I was a teenager, I heard the missionary will come to our town. And I was so excited because I never saw a missionary before. And I was expecting a strong man who could kill lion, crocodile. And for my surprise, a tall lady walked to the platform and started singing and preach. And I was sitting in that hard wooden bench and listening to her, and I said, God, if ever again you need another woman, I sure would like to work for you. It didn't take too many years and he gave me enough opportunity to, um, yeah, first I worked with the children, then the woman, then came Lydia, and you heard that started in several languages, and that was really my main job. And when the borders opened to the east, uh, I think it was two or three ladies from the Lausanne and Women Concern and AD 2000. They challenged me. They said, Elizabeth, could you bring together some women from the East and the West, but from different organizations and from different denominations? And I remember one said, Elizabeth, you understand the East growing up there but you have such a heart for the best. You are just the perfect combination for this job. I never thought growing up in the communist country that one day it will be a blessing to me. So you don't complain where you be born or which family God going to find you. So I began my search in God's word, what it says about a woman. And many of you remember, you were teaching me in the beginning. You had so many compassion with me. You were a step ahead of me. And I want to say today openly, thank you for that. But I did find Men and women are created in God's image. Men and women are redeemed by Christ. The Great Commission is mandate upon all Christians. You hear it? It's mandate. It's not a suggestion. 
it's a mandate for us. So I started out with the first woman, Eve. She was created to be a companion and a helpmate. Long ago, a devoted commentator observed that woman was not made of man's heart or rule over him, nor of his feet to trample on, but from his side to be equal with him, under his arm and be protected and near his heart to be loved. Yes, we are helpmate, but we are also a companion. God's word teaches us equality in Galatians 3.28. Yes, we are different. We have a different strength and different call, but we are not less important in God's eye. If God's image reflected both male and female, why wouldn't we have need both the male and the female? The family needs mother and father. And also the church needs spiritual mothers and fathers. God's people can't unite against the enemy when half of them in the side line. And that's why it's so more profitable, pro, uh, more better to work together. Just like the Bible says, one chase thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. You see, not even just doubles it, but even makes it ten times stronger. Just like Deborah and Barak. But we heard so well this week. I was so warm my heart about Deborah. So I'm going to skip Deborah if that was one of my main points. But one sentence from the last sentence, I will say what was in my note. Certain battles won't be won without a woman influence. And we all have our place. I've been in the ministry over 50 years. You will ask how old are you are? Yes, I am 71. I'm going toward to 72. I once I was young when I started out, but I'm getting older. I did not lead 10,000 men like Deborah. But I, more than once, I faced some angry man and angry woman. Then I complained, just like Jeremiah. See, Lord, they don't listen to me. What did God say to him? Jeremiah, if you get tired in a race against people, how can you possibly run against horses? Jeremiah 12.5 Elizabeth, do you think this present difficulty is tough? This is just like walking in the park compared to the race against horses that later struggles would require. Do you have any complaint? Oh, you're not complaining. You are always just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Then I met in the old Lutheran pastor, and I think he was a prophet because he didn't know me. And he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Elizabeth, you struggling to find the right voice, especially between man and woman, and also between charismatic and non-charismatic. Don't be afraid. Remember, you are building a bridge between them. 
the beginning was that's a big subject was 25 years ago. And I asked myself, do I want to be a bridge? A bridge where people walk over. Where people walked over me, sometimes my bridge was creaking and cracking. Then God again reminded me, Romans 5, 3 to 4 says, Adversity develops endurance. Endurance produces character. And people of character become people of hope. Do you want to be a hope woman? For God is very, very important, the character. The character, one thing what you take with you. And don't complain when God working on your character. But let's remember, through the 25 years, we build many, many bridges. You heard some of them between the East and the West, between men and women, and between different kind of denomination. I just t returned from Romania, Oradia, because we also celebrated the 25 years of Lydia in the Romanian language. This year I have 325, the Hungarian, the Romanian, no hope for Europe. Last year was 30 years, the Lydia magazine. As I spoke and I looked over that big crowd, the ladies, and I l saw it, some of them they wearing the scarf and the others not. And later on, I ask, why did some wear the other nuts? Oh, they are Pentecostals. But the conference was organized by the Baptist. My heart was so warm. Yes, we are growing together, just like what we learned in Hanover. But let's go further, that it would be not wrong to come here and said, stop. Let's see how Jesus treated women. But you have to understand, we have to keep the time. I remember in the beginning, we gave seven minutes, and then some of the women, they did not want to stop. They said, we have to finish it, what God put in my heart. And we just didn't know what to do. <laughs> we have story. All these things for a reason is there. But let's go to, ye, to Jesus, how Jesus treated women. Jesus entrusted one of the most important message, the resurrection to the woman. The most important message. Even that time, the woman couldn't even testify. Or oh, let's see the other one, Lydia. Lydia was the first follower of Christ in the European continent. And she happened to be a woman. That's not all. Also, the first church met in Lydia's house. She is our founding mother. And since we all following her footstep, and even the man. When we look back at history, Europe is famous for women, how God used in the past. And we have so many. I wish I could just tell them all, but I will only very shortly too. Susan Wesley, mother of Methodist movement, and I'm sure you heard that. She had the desire used by God. 
and she taught herself Hebrew and Greek. And every Sunday night, she got her children together and teaching the Bible. And sometimes like 200 joined her in her home. She was brave, take a risk to teach. And one time even her house was burned down. But she raised two sons, John and Charles Wesley, who later on was responsible for the revival in two continents, in England and in America. Did she leave us a legacy for women? Yes, she did. Today, some of the best Bible teachers around the world is women. I just want to mention a few, like Beth Moore, I'm sure many of you heard it, or Christina Kane, or Joyce Meyer, and many of many of you whom I heard, and way before, like my friends, Elizabeth Elliot, you remember, when, today, when the other day you mentioned, I thought, she was my friend, or Corrie ten Boom, but they all went ahead. But today what I see is the hundreds of bloggers, they come in the scene, because women love to encourage each other and exchange ideas. One of the best titles a few weeks ago I read, uh, Mama Bear Apologetic. So they exchanging a lot of ideas. At the other side, the block two, this year, July, General Conference and the International Pentecost Holiness Church was held in Orlando, attended by several thousand men and women. And one of the speakers was Bat Moore. And when she finished her sermon and she sat down, and everybody knew what in the hall they heard from God. And the people start to streaming forward to repent. Repent from man-made religion and also from pride. But in her denomination, the Southern Baptist, she not allowed to preach. So some fundamentalists have launched attack because she preached from the pulpit, And one blogger said that puts her in heresy simply because men were listening to her teaching. I mentioned that we come a long way, but we have still a long way to go and just stick by it. The other one, Katarina Booth, the mother of Salvation Army. Do you know Katarina was a pioneer from women's right? She was getting rid of the child, children prostitution and stood up for the poor. We need today more Katarinas. Just last week I heard from Bucharest from the Parliament that every day nine children disappeared, kidnapped. And now we can call it just women's trafficking, now becoming a children's trafficking. It's a sad, sad situation. Katarina left as an example a Christian service. She lit a candle in the world of selfishness. But let's not forget 
we have countless unsung heroes. Maybe you never read or heard their name. I just want to mention one. Biljana Nikolic, a small Roma woman who influencing her people. First time when I met with her in Croatia, she was begging for a kuna to have something for her children to eat. She'd been invited in the church and got saved. And later also her family. Through the year, I walked with her, I helped her. And the last time when I visited her in Darda, they just moved into their new church, the first Roma church in Croatia. Biljana's story also appeared in the Wall Street Journal because when the refugees passed through Croatia, she was helping them month in and month out. And once when a Syrian woman, it was winter, giving a birth for a child, everybody backed up, but not Biljana. She wasn't afraid to make her hand bloody. Maybe she know how it feels to be rejected. In Europe, we have a rich history in the past, but let's make history in the future. How? First step, Lord, here I am, send me. I never forgot that first step. There was a long time, but it was the best step in my life and I would do it all over again. And today when I look back, because we celebrated just the three magazine, um, just about 10 million copy went around the world. And how many got saved or encouraged and how many babies be born, I don't know. When I start to collect first time, I had a big box in my garage, but I thought, I'm not going to count it, God counting it. And you know why? Because that one woman <laughs> That one, I'm sorry, that one woman came to our town and showed me God needs woman. God needs you. The world needs you. We need you. And maybe some of you got tired or settled for less. I understand when you're running so long, but let God today, let the fresh fire fall on you. You don't need to shovel with a crowd. You can run with the horses. God needs all of us to finish the great task before he comes back. In Luke 14 says, the father longs to fill his house for a great celebration. Remember always why you're doing what you're doing 
It should be always in your mind. That's what why we're doing, why we're doing. Fill that house. Bring joy to our Father for that great celebration. Amen.